Hello everybody. My voice feels a little rough. I think it is a little rough. <clears throat> I was up at 4 a.m. to go sit in front of Big Five Sporting Goods at 4.30 this morning to wait until they opened at 10 o'clock in the freezing cold in the hopes of buying that uh, very difficult to obtain special stuff that you know is so hard to get these days, which I got three whole boxes of. But that's okay. That's what it takes today. Hey, when you all go out uh, for a shooting session, do you bring home trophies? Like this one I have sitting on my shelf. Shotgun shell. We have fun with our hobbies. So mainly I want to take a few minutes today and talk to you about installing sling swivel studs. Boy, say that three times fast. Sling swivel studs. So in order to do it, you need a few special tools. You need a, a drill block to make sure your drill bit goes in straight. Uh, if there's a flat section on the forearm like this one was, then maybe you need uh, like this chunk of uh, scrap aluminum I put an eighth inch hole in the middle of. Or you could use a piece of hardwood. Red oak is nice for these kinds of projects. Um, and then for back here, uh, you need a tool that will fit over the, um, the buttstock. Uh, again, with uh, with a starter hole through there. Um, this is red oak, two thicknesses glued together. Cut it in a square. Um, cut a square notch out of it. I did this on the milling machine, but I'm sure if you're a handy person, you could figure out how to make something like this with the tools available to you. I used an awl and poked a hole right in the middle there. And then I use the milling machine. I'm sure you could use a drill press. Just make sure you use a square on the drill bit. Uh, from the table to the drill bit with a drill press because that's uh, you know adjustable and make sure you're really square in all dimensions before doing it make sure the table is clean so you don't have some uh, particles of sawdust or something making it not square anyway and then drill that hole through and then you need uh, one of these special um, drill bits that you can get at uh, Brownells or Midway Supplier uh, eBay or wherever um, the thing I didn't care about this drill bit that I have is it's got this little extra stepped uh, notch cut here and I was thinking about maybe turning or grinding that off but maybe there's an advantage to it for some kind of stud that I don't have but what it did for me is it removed a couple of threads worth of engagement uh, out of the wood so, uh, you know, which was only a concern, not even really a concern, but, uh, you know, a mild concern uh, for the forearm screw, which is kind of short already. So I packed the hole with a uh, two-ton, 30-minute epoxy, uh, waxed the threads of the stud, and I went ahead and did it on the back hole, too, because uh, rather than taking it out and soaking it with oil to preserve the wood, I just let the epoxy do it. Uh, next time when I have to finish refinish the stock and I take those out because they were waxed, they'll, they'll come right out. But I felt like it probably provided a little extra strength. It may not really have been necessary. So anyway, uh, then to accomplish the task, I uh, figure out first where you want the holes. And that always is a huge agony for me, trying to figure out where I want things like this. Um, you can look at pictures online, other guns you have, consider um, the fit, the kind of clothing you're going to wear, the application of the sling, how it's going to be used. Um, but let me just give you a couple of thoughts to think about. One is that uh, you don't want it so far towards the heel that you run the risk of the drill bit running into one of the uh, butt pad screws. So you want to make sure you're well clear of the end of the screw inside the wood. Another thought you might uh, have is uh, if you're a particularly tall or big fellow with a long length of pull and you think someday somebody else might own that gun, then you might consider where that fellow's length of pull would be uh, once they cut the stock back and place the stud at an appropriate location for that length of pull. Uh, ultimately though, I don't know that's a real big concern because it's not a big deal to fill the hole and, and place it somewhere else or you know, maybe if you have a really long length of pull this ends up being in the area where the wood gets cut off anyway. So I don't know, it's just a thought to keep in mind. Then to do the job, I tape the, weight, uh, tape the wood with um, masking tape to prevent any splittering. And then I mark the location with a cross, you know, if I find the middle. Let me get this turned right side up, right side down rather. <laughs> um, 
you know, mark it, of course, this dimension, but also visually judge exactly where the middle is and draw another little line there. Do that on both ends. Once you're sure you're happy with those locations, then I use an awl, that's a sharp pointy tool, um, to, cr to make a hole and work it around and open up that hole a little bit. Then I use an eighth inch drill bit in a cord handheld cordless drill and uh, just drill a starter hole. It doesn't have to be too square or too perpendicular. It's just going to go in maybe a sixteenth inch, not more than an eighth inch, just to have a little um, divot the size of the drill bit. <clears throat> then you're ready to drill a hole. Now one could drill your hole in your blocks. Whoops, I'm trying to show you. You could drill that hole instead of eighth inch. You could drill it the final size. I kind of like working up in baby steps. Uh, if there's an issue, being undersized gives me some room to rework it maybe. I don't know, it's probably silly. But after drilling the eighth inch holes, I step drill it up until I'm at the final size hole. And then I just use this drill bit, not for drilling that hole so much as just uh, cutting the, the relief, the, uh, the recess. So, you got your little starter hole with the eighth inch drill bit or whatever size drill bit you want to use. And then uh, you stick the, the drill block on the drill bit, on the handheld drill, and together place the drill bit in its starter hole slide the block down so that's uh, flat on the wood and tilt the drill this way and that way until you are flat with the wood this way look square this way hold it in place poke the hole and then the same thing with the uh, buttstock you're gonna uh, start the hole stick the drill bit through the tool on the drill place that whole assembly so that the drill bit is in your little starter hole Rock this back and forth, back and forth. When you're happy with where it is, go ahead and poke the hole. Now, uh, with this, it's probably not going to drill as deep as you need because of the size of this. Uh, so then finish going as deep as you want by hand. On the forearm, usually you can just go all the way through because you're just going into the inletting anyway and it doesn't really matter. Then, in my case, I step drill up until we get to this drill bit size and then we use this and a handheld drill and cut the recess as deep as you like and this particular tool doesn't uh, cut particularly aggressively it's actually pretty hard to get it to cut um, so that's not too much of a concern it's not like using a forstner you know where you could really remove some wood in a hurry so then uh, that's uh, how to drill the holes in this installation's case most of these um, studs come with a little white washer to give a little appearance bling I guess um, these did not have it they were repurposed studs I'm sure just out of my box of goodies uh, so either they went away or maybe these particular studs didn't even come with them I don't know but I thought I liked that idea because back here because of the um, the curvature of the wood, if you screw the stud all the way down in there until it's flush visually, it's going to be getting really close to the hole for the swivel. So I wanted to stand it up. I wanted to give it a little contrasting look. So I turned these little maybe 30, 30 seconds inch uh, thick uh, little discs on the lathe. And it uh, might have been the tiniest thing I've turned on the lathe yet. I'm not sure, but boy, they're pretty tiny. And then I got that little disc off, and after parting off, there's extra material that didn't cut left on the disc. So I'm like, how am I going to take care of this? It wouldn't slice with a razor blade. It's way too tiny to try to sand or file. So I actually chucked it, that little tiny thing back up in the lathe, and both of them chucked up nice and was able to go in there with a chamfering tool and, and clean up the edge of the hole. They came out great. I, I, I like the looks. Here, here, let me hold it up a little closer to the camera for you. There's that one. See if you can see. Whoops. That one. How that came out. So the only other thing to point out here is um, this really cool Montana sling. Uh, I've always wanted one of these. Haven't had one. This seemed like a good project for it. There's not a particular lightweight gun. Um, I like that it doesn't have any uh, snaps, you know, no brass, no, no metal hardware to uh, 
you know, no belt buckle kind of thing, nothing to impinge on the stock. And the other thing that's cool, usually with slings like this, when you go put it in a bag, what do you do with all this extra material? You uh, fold it up, uh, you fold it this way, but with this, you can adjust it. Now it's brand new, and I have soaked it a few times in uh, conditioning, a leather conditioner, but it'll take a little while, I'm sure, to operate smoothly, but that's not really a big deal, and it goes in the bag nice and tidy, so I really like that. Reading online, I guess people also use it for different shooting positions. You can adjust it to different lengths to shoot different ways you want to uh, shoot using the sling. In my case, you know, I mainly use it for turkey. It's just uh, carrying it, just getting it out in the field, just need to carry it. And, uh, and I think it just really adds a nice uh, another touch of the natural world. Uh, which is one of the whole things that fascinates me about the shooting sports is, and it seems kind of silly to even verbalize this because, duh, it's not like we're mining asteroids and getting any materials from off-planet. But it is true that everything uh, that we do is created with materials that are mined out of the ground uh, or grow on the ground. So, you know, here we have aluminum, brass, steel, glass and the scope of wood, of course, you know, my favorite part of it. Um, and then we combine these natural materials into this really elegant way that creates something that uh, uh, expends projectiles at lethal accuracy and power. It's just a really kind of a cool whole concept. Natural world coming together. <clears throat> so Next, uh, you will see me uh, here on this channel in short order. Uh, I've got this uh, HW30 that's going to get a new spring kit. It's going in a stock that I've already published a few videos on that uh, is uh, really coming along. Uh, here it is. So uh, we're going to be cutting the length of pull, getting the recoil pad on there, and doing the finished sanding and start oiling it uh, here pretty soon. So you'll be seeing that. And then the, the next, uh, well, <laughs> at the same time, I'm also going to be working on this uh, HW90. This is um, not a gas ram. I call it a compressed air ram, which I just think is super cool, and I can't wait to work on this. So we're going to do a cut and crown on the barrel and uh, do a reseal on the ram and see if we can improve its performance. Apparently this gun uh, is like a scatter gun. It shoots uh, shotgun patterns. So we'll see if we can uh, tighten that up, and I'm sure we will be able to. Alright, so that's it for now. Please check in soon, and if you could do me a huge favor, please, if you uh, like this video or any of my others, please give them a thumbs up, that is, like them. Um, subscribe to my channel, please, that'd be a huge help, and uh, the biggest thing you could do for me would be to share it on your other... Uh, your other internet forums or you know your buddies and let them know what I'm doing and thanks very much for watching and we'll see you very shortly bye